And so am I. But every Saturday morning at 8 a.m., John cranks up the Zoom meeting, and us guys, and us guys get together and, and pour out what's in our heart, right. what's in our mind, and then we pray for revival. Yeah. <laughs> so there are times when things get ugly, but God makes them better. So, uh, so quiz for the congregation. How many different ways are there to give to Living Word Chapel? A lot. There's actually 40,000. There's actually five different ways. <sighs> First one is text to give. 844-685-710. The second one is called Venmo. <laughs> That's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> Third one is PayPal on our website. <laughs> Fourth one is cash. Cash in the baskets. Fifth one is Mona. Check, check in the mail. Oh, that's yes. <laughs> so there are five ways to give to Living Word Chapel. So uh, for so the other Zoom meeting that is is on pause right now is the uh, transformation classes that are going to be led up by Pastor Steve and Pastor Rhonda. God has put that on pause so that when we get going, Isaiah sixty one six will become real and the captives will be set free. Yeah. So be careful. So watch Facebook or uh, the Living Word Facebook page for that because once that goes, like the green light on NASCAR, boom. It's gone. So hurry up and get on there and, and watch lives be transformed. December 12th is what? It's a Saturday night. Worship night. Worship, Worship night. night. It starts at? Worship night. Woo! 6 p.m. And then Sunday, December 20th is what? Christmas. 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 The Christmas program. So there will be a food sign-up sheet printed up shortly. We just have uh, cookies and punch afterwards, so nothing big. Uh, so that's that. Also on the 22nd of November is a potluck. potluck. Miss Lisa has the sign up sheet, so it's just basically bring back, it's just a, basically a potluck. We ask that you don't bring possum or squirrel. <laughs> what? Hey, hey, what? no rules, man. Oh, man. And, if, and if you do bring it, please label it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it. Uh, we have Miss Libby giving us a word from. Mount Sinai today, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because her words do bring healing and yes. they do set captives yes. free. Yes. And she yes. has something more to add to the Christmas program. So that's all yours. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hey, does any other announcements come from? That was Bruce's announcement debut. Yay. They like you. <laughs> that might be. <laughs> Don't we have the, we just have the best people. Yes, amen. This microphone's speeding back. It's got a little, little, little thing, little tiny thing. Uh, we just have the best. This worship team, oh my goodness. Yeah. We go, we go other places. Well, we haven't in 2020, but we have gone other places. And we always come back here, like, our worship is the best. Our worship team is the best. We have incredible, yeah. Incredible people serving, you know, Alicia is taking care of all these meals so that we get the opportunity to, to fellowship together, to break bread together. And that's important, to sit across the table from somebody, look them in the eyes and talk about what's going on and how, you know, how are you doing? How's your week? Amen. Are we good? Amen. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah, we're good. Okay. I don't know if they're good, but I'm good. Alicia's good. It doesn't matter. All right. And I mean, and like Bruce mentioned, I wanted to talk about the children's the children's program a little bit. So um, some of the people who have been behind the scenes are people who have not come back into our building because of health for health reasons. They just want to make sure that they're you know social distancing in all the ways that they feel is safe for themselves. Um, however, they're still fully involved members of Living Word Chapel. They're, we're talking to them every single week. They're watching on Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook Live. We see you. Uh, you know, they're fully involved. And one of those people is Terry Kuhn, who loves directing the children's program. Yeah, he yeah. every year directs the children's program and absolutely loves it, and the kids love him. He's coming back to direct our children's program. Or the Woo! Help with directing the children's yeah! program. 
that you have people in your in your family or in your community who can't come or won't come to gatherings without masks. I have people in my family, yep. And so for that reason, on Sunday, December 20th, I'm telling you now so you have plenty of time to prepare, we are going to require masks for the children's program service. Because we want for all your grandmas and grandpas and all your mamas and daddies and all your aunts and uncles and all your people and all your neighbors and everybody to be able to come and experience the joy of the Christmas program. It's like my favorite service of every year to watch. I mean, Judah took off with the star last year, I think. He was like, right? Somebody, one of my children. No, she took off with baby Jesus. Oh, yeah. We took baby Jesus last year, and Judah was the star, and it was like, anyway. It's about, it brings so much joy, right, to just experience the simplicity of Christmas and children's excitement for Christmas. And we don't want to inhibit family members or community members to be from, you know, enjoying that process. So Sunday, December 20th, we will be asking that everybody wears a mask for this, you know, just for the kindness to our community. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Yep. It's okay if you're not. <laughs> um, I've got some, uh, I have some lies that we could laugh about this morning. Yay. Okay. You like that? Sean introduced this a couple weeks ago. It's a practice by Steve Backland. Um, and here's his premise, is that in order to laugh, you have to let go of something. Right? In order to laugh, you have to let go of something. And joy is our strength. We should be people who carry joy. So I have some lies for us to laugh about. Donald Trump is our savior. <laughs> right, right? Right, go on. On earth. Let's try this one. Joe Biden is our savior. <laughs> oh, where did the laughter go? That's funny. It's funny. Let's try this one. The government is greater than God. No! <laughs> The media can override God's plan. In order to laugh, you have to give up something. The media can override God's plan. We laugh at these lies because when we laugh, we uproot something. And sometimes things get rooted down inside of there that need to be uprooted. Right? I think it's pretty ironic today that you get me. <laughs> because I'm probably one of the least political people that you'll ever met, uh, ever meet. Yeah, I just like don't get involved. I don't, um, you know, my husband is super duper involved and that's his bent. That's good for him. Uh, it's not for me. And I uh, think it's ironic that you get me today. <laughs> because, uh, you, you know, if you came here today to find out what Living Rich Chapel's stats is on politics, you are not going to get it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If politics didn't belong in the early church, they don't belong in this church. Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> this should be the place where we come and we just turn our eyes off of all the other stuff. Right. Okay. Right? Yeah. Where we focus our attention and our and our eyes back to the one, the yeah. reason, yeah. the why. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That does not mean that we do not have strong opinions. Yeah. That does not mean that we do not have strong feelings about what's happening in our nation. Are we supposed to laugh at that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, thank you. <laughs> but here's what it does mean. It does mean that we will not sacrifice the character of Christ in order to communicate our message. Right. Yes. Right, right. We are not here to take a side, except for the side of the kingdom of God. When Joshua was sent to Jericho to go fight the battle of Jericho, he encountered an angel. And he was scared. You know, Joshua was going into Jericho. It was a double-walled city. And he was like, okay, I got to go fight this battle. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, oh, yeah. Jericho, right? He encountered an angel with his sword drawn. And Joshua, scared, said, are you with us or are you against us? And the angel said, no. <laughs> that wasn't one of the multiple choice options. That wasn't like none of the above or both, all of the above. He says, are you for us or are you against us? And the angel said, no. Are you for me? Whoa. I'm sent as an angel of the Lord, as a messenger of God. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. We're not here to take a side. We have strong opinions. 
But I am not for one side or the other. I want to make sure that he knows I'm on his side. Yes. Right. yes. And then in Matthew 5, verse 9, it says, well, why don't we turn to it? Let's just turn to that really quick. It's a super quick little verse. as a true child of God. Children of God will be known for being makers of peace. Right. Children of God will be known for being makers of peace. Right. There is a drastic difference between being a maker of peace and a keeper of peace. A keeper of peace is somebody that like, doesn't want to deal with the conflict. Everybody just stay in their own spot. Don't cross the line. Don't, sh don't rock the boat. Don't shake. A maker of peace is someone who's willing to address the issue, go to the root of the issue, and make peace. Yeah. And then we'll be known as children of God. And I know you're probably thinking, like, but what about this? But what about that? And here's what I'm going to tell you. Every single time my kids come to me and they're like, she did this, mom. Or if I'm counseling with somebody and there are more than one, there's more than one person involved in the situation and they're talking, I, talking to me about the situation. Here's what I always say, always say, I'll talk to them about them, but right now I'm talking to you about you. Oh, oh, oh. I'm talking to me about me, so this is not like I'm trying to correct anyone. I'm talking to us about us. How about that? There is plenty to look at, to deal with, to whatever. And not taking a side does not mean we don't have strong opinions, but it does mean we are responsible for we. We are responsible for us. So I'm talking to you about you. In first, or Second Timothy, it says, for God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit gives you power, love, and it, a lot of translations say sound mind, but the translation I love says self-control. The Holy Spirit does not give you, or God does not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of self-control. If you guys would just pray with me for a second. Father God, we just thank you so much for this beautiful day, for this community of believers that we have the opportunity to be surrounded by, and we thank you for our nation. We thank you, God, that you have a plan, you've always known the plan, and that we don't know it, but it's okay. Yes. <laughs> it's okay that we don't know. We trust you. How much more faith stirs up inside of me when I only trust. Oh, good word. And so, Father God, we just rest back into your arms today. We rest back into your plan and to your knowing. We know that you're good, and we know that you have a plan, and so we just surrender it all to you today. Let my words be your words. Let our, our, our eyes, our hearts, and our ears be open today. Yeah. Just say that with me. Let my eyes, my ears, and my heart be open to you today. Yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to read to you today from Isaiah 58. Um, this is a little bit of some meat to chew on, so I'm going to do a little bit of teaching. If I could ever get my phone to unlock. How does this thing unlock in my pocket when I'm not touching it, <laughs> but then when I want it to unlock, it just won't? Anybody else? Self-control. <laughs> Self-control. <laughs> Okay, Isaiah 58, and I'm going to read a few verses. Um, the reason I'm reading it off of my, my device is because Isaiah is actually translated in the Passion Translation, um, but it isn't in paper print yet, so I'm reading it off of here in the Passion Translation. So if you're reading along, the, the words might be a little bit different, but um, so that's, that's why I'm reading here. So it's Isaiah 58, verse 9. Then Yahweh will answer you when you pray, and when you cry out for help, he will say, I am here, if. You banish every form of oppression, the scornful accusations, and vicious slander. And if you offer yourselves in compassion for the hungry and relieve those in misery, then your dawning light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will turn into the noonday splendor. Yahweh will always guide you where you go and what to do. He will fill you with refreshment even when you are in a dry, difficult place. He will continually restore strength to you, so you will flourish like a well-watered garden, 
and like an ever-flowing, trustworthy spring of blessing. Your people will rebuild long-deserted ruins, building anew on foundations long before laid, before, laid long before you, and you will be known as the repairers of the cities and restorers of community, the restorer of the reach. And so I want to break this down for us and talk about some of the details of that promise. Isaiah is written as a prophecy to the people of God. It says, you know, the whole chapter is talking about, like, our ceremonies and our rituals are not enough. Going to church and praying or fasting or whatever you're doing for the sake of the ceremony or the ritual is not enough. And at the very beginning, it says, Yahweh will answer you when you pray, will cry, and when you cry out for help, he'll say, I am here, if. Okay? So there's a, there's a statement of promise, and there's a statement of responsibility. If you. And so here are the things that says if we need, that we need to do. Banish every form of oppression. I think as a community of believers, we're pretty good at that. We're not oppressing anyone. Correct? Yeah. If you are, let's deal with that. But I think for the most part, as a community of believers, we're not oppressing anyone. So it says, commit to banish every form of oppression. It says, have compassion for the poor. Again, I think as a community of believers, we have pretty good practice, pretty good track record of being compassionate to the poor and comforting those who are suffering. Right? Right. We're like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Number four, it says, remove finger pointing and criticism of others in their ministries. Oh, shoot. <laughs> remove finger pointing, the blaming. The, did you, but what if, I did, bah. Yeah. Yahweh will answer when you pray. When you cry out for help, he will say, I'm here, if. We remove the blame. And number five, when we stop spreading malicious slander. What's coming out of our mouth? What's coming out of our mouth? Whether you know the person you're talking about or not, whether it seems like it's going to matter to them or not, removing malicious slander. Malicious slander. But here's the promises. I mean, the promises are like three times more than the expectations. The promises are that our spiritual light and influence will increase. That discouragement and gloom will disappear from our lives. Can anybody, anybody say yes, I would like that? No more gloom in my life. Right. Yeah. No more gray cloud. No more gray cloud. Yeah. It says that God will give us guidance of what to do and where to go. Anybody ever ask for that? Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do next. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. But he'll give you guidance. He'll fill us with grace when we're surrounded by difficult situations. Wow. To be filled with grace when you confront something that we don't have a grid for. Our spiritual lives will flourish. We'll be an ever-flowing sense of blessing to others. I'd like that. We'll be given God's grace to rebuild lives. I'd like that. To be given the grace to rebuild lives. Yes. That will take up the legacy of our spiritual fathers. Who is your spiritual father or mother? You want to take up their legacy. That's what the promise is. That we will have a testimony of healing cities. And we will restore the well-being to our communities. If we operate in compassion, we comfort those who are suffering, we banish oppression, we stop the slander, and we stop pointing the finger. Deal. <laughs> Deal, Tyler. Sorry. <laughs> because you see, whenever I see injustice, whenever I see something that just is not right, I mean, because there is that, right? Yeah. There is clear right and wrong. There is clear black and white. Whenever I see something that's unjust or lawless or it, it, like there's pain or there's something that's bigger than me, it's like, I don't even know like, how my influence is going to change that. Every time, and my husband is a witness to this, here's my question. What is my responsibility? Every time. When I look at something that is a problem way bigger than me, 
I say, what is my responsibility? Mm. You and I are boots on the ground. Right. Yep. Right. You and I are boots on the ground. That's really okay. good. It says we've been given this, this uh, ministry of reconciliation. Well, what does that mean? That we, we are makers of peace. Right. Yep. First Timothy says pray for every leader Amen. and every representative so that you would be able to live a tranquil and undisturbed life. Whoa. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> Pray for your every leader so that you can live a tranquil and undisturbed life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I prayed for President Obama. I prayed for President Trump. I'll pray for President Biden. Because I want a peaceful and tranquil life. It's up to you. I'm smiling. <laughs> What's my responsibility? The Bible says, pray for your leader. The Bible says, love your neighbor. The Bible says, stop pointing the finger. The Bible says, watch your words. That's my responsibility. I'm boots on the ground. There's a whole lot in this planet that happens outside of my control, but I control my choices. I control my words. I control who I influence. And if you want to change the world, be boots on the ground. I had a conversation with my daughter the other day um, on, on election day, and she's, well, I won't get into all of that, but <laughs> we're not here for sides. <laughs> but there is one thing that I'm absolutely morally convicted about, and that is the stance of abortion. It's the genocide of this nation, this generation. That doesn't mean we don't love those who are, are in process, that have got walked through. Yeah. But it does mean that taking a, a stand for the people who don't have a voice is our call. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And her question was, well, what if, what if laws don't change and they say it stays legal? And I said, I still love. Laws don't change by effect. It doesn't change who I affect doesn't change loving that mama that needs somebody to support her. doesn't change stepping in in adoption or foster care. When there are human beings who are alive, it doesn't matter what the law does or says. And of course, it doesn't mean we don't have strong opinions or feelings. It does mean I take my responsibility and do what I have right in front of me. Right? Right. I am right. Hey, if you don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> you have a right to be wrong. <laughs> if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their, their land. Whoa. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll heal my land, that, their land. It's back to us. It's back to you. It's back to me. Remember what I, what I said, God has never given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and of self-control. So any time that we're blaming someone else, any time, and I'm not talking about politics anymore, any time we're blaming someone else, it's rooted in entitlement. You had a life I didn't have. So of course you got Any time that we're blaming someone else, it's rooted in entitlement and in a sense of justice that's misplaced. And any time that we're slandering or gossiping, again, I'm not talking about the political climate, it's rooted in bitterness and insecurity. I have no reason to speak poorly of Eric if I'm confident in who I am as a human being. Yeah. Okay. Any time we're gossiping or slandering, it's always rooted in bitterness and insecurity. If I'm confident in who I am, then I can cheer anybody on. And I can support and encourage anyone that comes my way. If I'm confident in who I am and whose I am. So in the blaming, the finger pointing, we have to look at what root of entitlement do we have. 
or lack or justice that's misplaced. And anytime we're slandering or gossiping, it's got to be rooted in something that has to go back to our identity, the orphan spirit healed. You know, I, at the beginning of 2020, God gave me a vision statement for Living Word. Some of you were here with us at that point, some of you were not. And 2020 hit like a hurricane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything like shook up. And now here we are in November and I, I was reminded of this vision statement for 2020. I'm going to read this to you, kind of bring it back full circle. But here was the vision statement, is the vision statement for 2020. We believe that God is supernaturally breaking the power of addiction. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. We believe that God is restoring families and healing broken homes. Wow. We believe that God is breaking the stronghold of anxiety and depression to release joy in his people. We believe that God is training us to become the church, not just people who come to church. Yeah. I mean, how many months of this year we couldn't go to church, so we had to learn how to become the church. Right. We believe that God is speaking identity and a sense of belonging into his sons and daughters, and that identity overcomes the orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. The orphan spirit is what's rooted in the slander. <laughs> we believe that God is radically uprooting lies of the enemy that keep his people from living in freedom and abundance. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. We believe that God is radically uprooting lies of the enemy that keep his people from living in freedom and abundance. Yes. Wow. We believe that God is realigning his people with the power and authority that was already purchased at the cross. Yeah. And that we would once and for all be dead with brokenness, dysfunction, and disease. And lastly, we believe that as we co-labor with God to destroy the works of the enemy, we will see heaven on earth. And every single one of those goes back to you and me. Comes right back to the finger pointing this direction. In pre-service prayer, we have pre-service prayer, by the way, 945. It's fun in there. Um, the song, It Is Well With My Soul, came on. Oh. <laughs> it Is Well With My Soul. Oh. Mm -hmm. And God reminded me of this story um, probably 10 years ago. It's not quite nine years ago. When I was going through the worst season of my life, the song, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I sang that song four billion times that year. <laughs> to the point my girls were like, Mom, stop singing that song. But it was an anchor for me. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things the way you do. Give me wisdom. Give me strength. Fast forward then to about five years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, in that season between nine years ago to four or five years ago, I met Shawn Michael Higgins. The song was the answer. <laughs> 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 I mean, sometimes. <laughs> hey. Ooh, ouch. And we had we had Judah, and we were cleaning the garage one afternoon, um, and Judah was little, like one, two, maybe. And we found this like old container of CDs and a radio boombox that. So we just plopped the CD in and started cranking music. Typical Higgins fashion, just like loud and obnoxious. Our neighbors <laughs> love us. Uh, and so we started just cranking out music, and this song, God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed, came on just blaring through our neighborhood. 
And Jude Michael, this little two-year-old, came running up to me in the garage, and he, we had to have this place in our, in our garage where there's the stairs going down and then this cement slab that's higher, so when you're standing at the bottom of the stairs, the cement slab is like here. And he was here and I was down at the bottom of the flight of stairs, and he kind of got my attention and pulled my face in, and he said, that's mommy's song. Aww. That's mommy's song. Guess what? Judah was not there when I was singing it. Oh, wow. Wow. Glory. Those years prior, when that was my anchor, my rock, Judah wasn't involved in that. <laughs> and it, I mean, yeah, I like that song, but it wasn't like something part of our regular whatever. But there are things that we are doing right now and saying right now that are shaking a spirit world that we don't see. Amen. Yeah, come on. What we focus on, you know, fear is just misplaced faith. Whoa. Wow. That's good. What we focus on, what we anchor ourselves to, is changing everything. Whether you see it or not. And that was, a, that was an incredible moment for me to realize, like, whoa, all those times those words came out of my mouth. Spiritually, my son, from all of eternity, was listening there. Right. And carried it to just talk to mama that day. Mm. Wow. But what we're doing, what, what we're anchored in, what we're believing, what we're talking about, where we're pointing our fingers, where our focus is, where our faith is, is changing the atmosphere all day, every day. Right. And we as a body of believers, now again, I'm talking to you about you. <laughs> we're supposed to be rising to our shining. We're supposed to be a light in the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to look different. Yeah. We're supposed to feel different. Yeah. It, you know, Isaiah 58, the promise was that our gloom would be gone. Yeah. Right. If. Right. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and so my challenge for myself and my challenge to you today is that in the you know, Sean and I have talked to a lot of people this week, and there's fear. There's fear, there's anxiety, there's, and there's fear about the big stuff, and there's fear about the small stuff, and there's fear about everything in between. There's the stirring and the swirling. Even me talking about it right now, you feel it again, right? <laughs> Don't talk about it. <laughs> That's what I do sometimes, actually, last night. It, Sean and I were in the middle of a conversation, and there was another person who was, and I just was like, Cannot, 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 cannot. That's me. I know me. I know, you know, it is well with my soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. That is well when we know what to anchor ourselves in. And that's a, that goes back to choice. We, we, we choose the content that goes in. And I know that there are times that my soul can handle that conversation, and there are times that my soul cannot. And it's important to know the difference. But my challenge for myself and for us is that as we go back into the world, that we rise to our shining by choosing to be the people we're called to be. By anchoring ourselves into the faith that we, you know, all of God's promises, all of his faithfulness, all of his mercy, all of the times that he's been right there, and he's always had a plan, always has. That's where the hope lies. And it doesn't mean we don't have strong opinions doesn't mean we don't have strong feelings, but it does mean that we will not sacrifice being the character of Christ in the middle of it all. Amen? Amen. Wonderful, wonderful word. Tiny, you know, we have said that we're not just going to be a come and feel good place. We're going to come and tell the truth place sometimes, yeah. too. And it is nice to come here and feel good because that's what God wants from us. But sometimes we have to also hear the message of the time to take back and do it. And the one thing I really took out of Libby's message and, and I want to point out before we go is a challenge to you guys this week. In fact, it's actually probably the first time I'm going to say this. This has to change in our culture and it has to change in us. Right. It has to change in Living Word Chapel. Right. Um, if it is going on in your life. And it starts in Proverbs 6, and it says there are uh, seven things God hates. Right. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty big thing. Seven things God hates. Um, and it's not exactly what you think it would be. Uh, one of them is spreading lies and rumors. 
Um, oh, six things God hates and seven that's an abomination. One of them is spreading lies and rumors and the abomination which is past what God hates. Uh, it's, a, it's a deeper level of hate is um, stirring up strife between friends. <laughs> stirring up division amongst friends is, is, is a very serious thing. Spreading lies, spreading lies in false testimony and um, spreading lies and rumors. And now the reason I bring this up is because I think in this time we've been duped a little bit. It's easy to talk about what's going on in the times. Um, and where God convicted me on this is a specific story about a laptop. Anyone remember that? It was in the news. They had found a laptop. It was a big deal. And I started talking about that laptop as if I had actually known that was to be true. I started talking and saying, like, well, yeah, they got this laptop and blah, blah. Did you hear this and that? Isn't that spreading a rumor? Yeah, it is. Am I spreading lies? Yep. Yeah. It could be. Could be. I could be spreading lies. So as we talk about, it, it could be on both sides. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you are. You right. could be saying Donald Trump is going to steal this election because X Y Z, or Joe Biden is going to steal this election because of X Y Z. It's spreading lies, and it's causing more division in our country. Right. Yeah. Right. All that needs to be said is, I hope justice is served. Right, right. I pray that justice is served. I don't know about that subject. I'm just, I pray that if there is, I pray justice is served. So as you go out into this week, be super diligent and super careful to guard your heart, especially yes. about what Libby is saying. This election process has brought up something I think is way more important than who's in office. It's brought up who's in our heart. Right. Right. How are we behaving? Right. If it's going to cause you to all of a sudden get up and say, like, well, I'm ready to fight and kill. Wow. We're off track. Because that ain't God. That ain't God. But if it's got you in a place to say, like, I know no matter what happens, God's in charge. Yes. And I'm not going to change what's going on in here. I'm not going to change how I think about him. I'm not going to change how I think about him. I'm not going to change how I respond because God is the one in charge. And he's in charge of my life, and he's in charge of my heart. Do I, do I want justice served? Heck, yes. Do I want any form of corruption in my life or in the world around me? Heck, no. But I'm not going to be disrespectful, full of hate, and spreading lies and rumors in order to try to get my way. Because guess what? If God wants it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. There ain't nothing you're going to do to change it. So... Yep. On a way brighter note, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a. You guys, well, you guys promise to do that with me. Watch what you say this week. Yeah. Watch what you say this week. Because I really want what I really want what Libby's talking about. I want people to walk in here and feel that doom lifted and that gloom lifted. I, I want to be a place where people come and say, like, I don't know, it's, it's different out there. And in order to do that, we gotta carry this together. We gotta watch right. what we're doing together. When right. God points something like this out inside of us, we gotta be a team to walk it out. Amen. Yeah. Family. Yep. Family, right? Amen. You be LeBron. I'll be Scotty Pippen. <laughs> <laughs> Give that assist or whatever, you know. But now we're gonna flip this. You guys ready to cheer? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Eric Roble brought brisket, man. <laughs> So I'm going to extend my hand over the meal and say, God, thank you so much for all the food that you brought. May it be blessed unto our bodies. May it bring good conversation. May we enjoy the rest of the day together. May we go out into the community and spread joy, peace, prosperity, and righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you need any prayer in your body, you can come on up. Physical, emotional, financial, anything will be up here. But otherwise, go enjoy the food.